Hi there. Since my last video, I've had quite a few new subscribers. My channel is pretty new, um, but the thing that inspires me to do more of these uh, demonstrations is when I know people are watching them. So thank you to everybody who has watched the last one, which was the White Lily. And um, thank you to all those that subscribed. It makes it uh, um, so worthwhile to know that people are finding some use out of what it is that I'm showing you. If you're uh, relatively new to your watercolour journey, um, don't discount watching videos of subjects that may not be your favourite choice because there is always something to learn in every one of them. When I choose to demonstrate paintings, it's not always just something that fires me up, it's because there might be something in there that I can share. And even if you've learnt um, techniques from um, other uh, classes or workshops or um, YouTube, when you see someone else uh, demonstrate a, um, a similar uh, technique, sometimes it just resonates with you as being easier for you, or you might just add it to what you already know and build up your um, um, technique um, from there. So, um, as I say, thanks very much. If you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button um, because I love seeing those um, subscriptions go up and it inspires me to find something else to show you. So let's have a look and see what it is that I'm going to do today. I've always loved having flowers, fresh flowers in the home and never more so since I've been painting in watercolour because there's always an opportunity to have a little play with colour combinations or to try to depict a flower. And yesterday my hubby brought me home this bunch of uh, mixed flowers, reds, purples and light greens and don't they look beautiful together? So I'm going to try and have a play and um, be inspired by this bunch. I'm not going to paint it in the vase. I'm going to keep it as if it's um, they're just growing. Of course, they wouldn't all grow together, but uh, I'm going to see what I can do to make a painting from it. It might just be a study. It may turn out to be a, um, a finished work. I can show you how to capture some texture for those um, carnations. We've got Lilianthus, we've got some green button looking things, I don't know what they are, and we've got these chrysanthemums. So I think this is going to be an interesting one to do because we're going to mix reds and purples and greens, which is a lovely combination. Here's a poppy painting that I did in the same type of way. It's intuitive, it's just building up bright colour and making something that uh, pleases you and you have some fun. So let's see how we go. I've moved my bars of flowers onto my um, working table, my painting table, and I've got them in a position where I can turn them around to try and see um, the different flowers in the bars. And you won't always be able to see what it is I'm painting, but um, I wanted to be able to get as much of the painting in um, on the video that I could, and the mixing in the palette. I think this is a really good idea. Sometimes when you can only see the painting, but you can't see the paint happening, you miss out on the opportunity to see um, some colour mixing. Uh, I'm going to be painting on a half sheet today, which means, of course, then I've got that big um, distance to, to cover here, which is sometimes a little tricky on the videoing, but I will do my best. I like to create large because when I'm painting um, intuitively, there's a freedom about it. And if you do it on a small piece of paper, even a quarter sheet, you tend to have to do it a little bit tighter because it's a small piece of paper, you can't get your arm moving, so you lose a little bit of that looseness. So I'm going to be doing it on a half sheet. This is Saunders Waterford um, cold press paper. It is the 425 uh, GSM, which I like because it doesn't, um, um, buckle very much and I don't have to try pressing it afterwards to get it flat. It's also just the standard, it's not the high white because I have no white flowers in my um, painting today so I don't need that added, added benefit of the bright white. So standard coloured paper, reds, purples and greens. Now I've already done some YouTube um, colour mixing video where I talked about mixing interesting greens and also how to make bright purples. Of course you can use a tube. If you've got tube paints, you can dip into those, but I love it when I mix my own greens, my own purples. But these Lilianthus have got a really beautiful purple that looks um, perfect with um, using maybe Winsor & Newton um, Violet. 
Um, so I think I might even use that and not do the colour mixing. So my next thing here is to think quickly about my composition um, or make a lot of it up as I go along, uh, but my colour mixing. So I'm going to have a go at doing that now. Um, so let's get some colour ready. I'm testing my colours on a piece of the same paper, the same coloured paper, because that way then I'm going to actually know what they're going to look like on my painting. Um, so I've got a mixture of greens in here, the, the little button type um, um, flowers are sort of a green gold looking. This is Windsor and Newton green gold. Um, both thinking about it, it might have been the Daniel Smith, I'll have to check that. But anyway, they both make a green gold. So just with a little bit of play here, first of all, I can work my colours out without having committed to my painting. I need a dark green to go in there as well. So I'm probably going to go for another green here. Um, let's see, maybe if I put in, no, not that. Um, this little bit of colour playing is important because it's better to have committed to this and find out that there's something you don't like. Actually, I'm going to go to this Queen Gold with Indigo and let's see, just so that I can get another type of green. I can drop this in. Get a bit of a varied look um, for those little button looking flowers. I've got, um, as I say, I've got lilianthus. I've got them in purple, but I've also got these, um, well, they're sort of white, but they have a green tinge to them. So I could use the um, green gold, very watery. That would probably do quite a good job. And then just put the sepals or whatever they are. One day I'm going to take the time to learn the parts of a flower. But the whole time I'm painting, I don't seem to have time to learn too much else. I just want to paint. So that would do those quite well. So plenty of water, light green paint. There we are. Now, what else have we got here? We've got these purple lilianthus. And this wings of violet. Carbazol violet, if you've got Daniel Smith. That's going to be perfect because you can put it on pretty full strength in places, add your water to get your lighter purple. That would do that quite well. And what else have I got in here? I've got these beautiful um, um, red carnations. Red and picky looking, I suppose. So, um, I don't know about the reds I've got in here. This is Windsor and Newton. Um, just Windsor red. A little bit boring on its own, but Maybe if we drop in some pink into that, so maybe permanent rose. And let me show you how you could turn this into a carnation. I'll do a little test on here. So I've got the Windsor Red and the permanent rose in there, and I'm going to put a bit of cling film in there. Uh, Always best to have these sorts of things at hand uh, rather than go looking for them afterwards. But you can take a bit of cling film. Let's see if I can get this carnation out of here to show you. If you look at the carnation here, it's lots and lots of furls. Furls and curls. If I put the cling film down and I'll just scrunch it up a little bit, I'll try to zoom in on that and uh, you'll be able to see. You've got to let this dry and then you're going to get sort of a bit of a pattern in there. 
Now that I've got this carnation out of the vase, I can see it's a lot pinker. So I may well make it more pink than red. Um, and then the next one I've got to think about for colour is going to be the um, chrysanthemums, big chrysanthemums. Are they all the same? They are basically. So there's a lot of white on these or uh, sort of a spotty pink edge. Um, they're sort of a ball, so I could wet the shape. I'm doing two things here actually with my colour selection. I'm actually having a practice at how I'm going to um, make these flowers so that perhaps by the time I get to do the painting, if I've had a practice at it, this is a bit the same really. It's a red and a pink colour. So maybe mixing the two together a little bit. And these are a lot more like little dashes. Put the colour down. They've got a white edge to them, so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that. But by the time I've had my little play here, I'll have a better idea than if I just went straight in on my painting. So here I'm dropping the colour in and I'm already leaving lots of white um, spaces, basically. So I think that would work for me. So again, really, it's the same colours that I've got for the carnation. So one could have more red in it, one could have more pink in it. Um, I think I could make that work. Okay, and then really that leaves um, the actual leaves themselves. The uh, chrysanthemums have got a very red uh, leaves, uh, a lot of red on their leaves, I should say. So they've got their green leaf, and it's quite dark in some places and lots of little edges to it. So not a flat leaf looking thing. Could be quite dark. And has got red in it. So I'll just be using the red mixture that I've got for the flowers. I think that will work. And the greenery for the others, well, I could just stick with this green gold, still with a bit of indigo. And the queen gold. And the indigo. So I think there's enough variety there. So let's just recap before we start the actual painting so that if uh, well, I will have to stop at some stage and let something to dry, it'd be nice to know what I'm uh, using when I go back in. So I've gone for green gold. And I'm gonna call all of these Winsor & Newton because I'm pretty sure they are. Winsor & Newton green gold, quinacridone gold, Windsor violet, Windsor Violet, Windsor Red, and Permanent Rose, Indigo. Did I go into anything else? Two, three, four, five, six colours. One, two, three, four, five. No, I think that was it. Now, just because you work your colours out here, you see they're working for you. When you actually get going on the painting itself, if you've changed your mind or you realise that something else is going to work better, there's no policeman standing around to say you can't change your mind. So you still work with what's happening with your painting to bring it out to something that pleases you. But it's good to have a start because it takes away a lot of the frustration as you get going. I'm going to just turn off now, clean things up before I get going, and then maybe this bit of cling film could come off and I can show you what that's going to uh, look like. I haven't left the cling film on here long enough. I'm a bit impatient to get painting, but uh, I've 
um, taking it off. And when you take it off too soon, what happens is you get the paint will run back in and it won't it won't make the marks. But there's some texture on here. Uh, see if you can see this. Um, so if you if I'd left it on there longer, I would have had more. And the more texture you've got, the less painting you've really got to do because you're relying on that um, to make the marks of the flower shape. So I'm all ready to go. I've got my colours worked out. I've got my vase of flowers I've lowered to in front of me here so that I can get a better idea um, of how to turn this into a painting. I may not be talking a lot uh, during this process because I actually don't have a drawing. I'm going to be making a lot of it up as I go along. If I have a point where I can stop and um, talk to you about something, I will. If not, um, I hope you just enjoy watching me um, try to create something from this. I'm going to be using um, some mop brushes that I've been experimenting with the last few paintings. If you get new brushes, it's a good idea to um, use them for a while to decide whether they actually work for you or not. So I've got a number 12 um, mop brush here and a Skoda um, Aquario brush. The two smaller ones are a Neef, a Thomas Schaller designed Neef brush. Um, it says a 3.0 and an O. The sizes in mop brushes are very different to round brushes. Round brushes, for instance, this is a number eight, you know, is um, smaller than this 3.0 in a mop. So unfortunately, it's really hard to know uh, until you've had a bit of experience of buying them, what it is you're going to get. But I'm gonna do a bit more practice with these mops today. Doesn't mean to say I won't reach in for my good old regular rounds, but I'm going to try and see what I can do with these. And as I say, more practice with the brush, I can decide whether it's going to work for me or not. So let's get going. Um, as I say, I may talk, I may not talk. Um, it's just going to be how I go. I'm going to be painting some wet into wet. I'm going to be painting some on dry. And when I'm not sure what combination or what it is that I want, I will go for a good old spray bottle and wet some area so that I've actually got some places where the paint might whisk off and do a bit of its own thing and some places where I've got it to work. Uh, I've got to work at it with my brush. So let me see how we get going here for a feel on this. Um, so I've got to think that where I'm going to put red flowers, not to let the green go into there because red and green are color opposites and when they meet, they, they're going to gray down and you're not going to be left with bright color. So the interesting thing is, when you paint intuitively, you've still got to have in the back of your mind what colour is going to touch what colour um, so that you can remain with the fresh colour that it is you're going to need. So let's just see how I go here. I might start off the top here with um, some bright um, colour. Um, as I say, I haven't really got absolutely in my mind what I'm going to do here. So the idea, first of all, is to get some paint on the paper and see what it is that you've got to play with. So I'm looking at these little button, um, little button um, flowers at the top. Drop a bit of colour in there. Think now where I might, I might like a bit of purple around this. If I use this great big brush, I'm going to be adding a lot more uh, liquid to my paper, which is already a little bit wet, and it will swim a bit more. So I might just drop down to a slightly smaller brush, have a tissue in my hand ready. And I'm thinking now of these Lilianthas, um, which could be, around here, or one of them around here. So I'm just going to let the paper that has some moisture on it, pick up the paint off the brush and try to get those shapes. So purple here, 
maybe another bit of purple behind it over here. Somebody doing some work outside on their gutters. I hope they keep it quiet. It's really hard in a home studio to always get the perfect sort of um, settings for doing filming um, because, you know, sometimes a kid will come out in the back garden and start uh, playing and making a little bit of noise, which of course they're allowed to do, but not while I'm filming. Dogs will bark, including my own. So I'm trying to think of a composition, but doing it at a bit of a slow pace because I'm really being mindful of where this colour is going to take off and mix with something else. So let's put a bit of the pinky colour down for a carnation and I might even put a bit of cling film on this because I showed you that it will work and why not give it a shot. So I'll have a little piece ready. Cling film or um, uh, plastic wrap, you know, in other parts of the world they don't call it cling film. Um, so I've got the button ones here, I've got purple over here, I'm going to set a chrysanthemum here. So I'm still not just painting like I'm not painting the side of a house, I'm trying to let the paint drop off the end of the brush and catch the water. Um, twirling it around, trying to measure the size of a carnation versus the other flowers that I've got down here so that I don't end up with anything humongous and out of place. Um, look, I might even drop in a bit of opera pink and that's not on my colour chart. Oh dear. Anyway, that's what I fancy doing. I should have got a bit of it ready. Paint in the palette that's not very moist, sometimes hard to get off the, onto your brush. So I'm dropping a bit of that opera pink in here because it just will pink it up a little bit better than the rose that I initially chose. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this bit of cling film on here. When you use the cling film and you're in the middle of a painting and you're still trying to go around other parts, it can be a little bit tricky. So make the cling film as small as I can um, and then get it in here and hopefully I can still paint around it and now I can't really finish that um, carnation I think it could be a wee bit bigger so let's just come around there like that okay so I've got two purples one red and two little buttons so I'm now going to carry on and put some more of those little button flowers in. Um, and I'm going to stop talking now so that I can concentrate a bit more on some design for this. So I'll pop a bit of music on. It'll probably be a little bit of speed painting. And I'll get back to you when I've got uh, something extra to say.
much for this first wash as I can. I've got cling film on the two carnations. This is drying very, very pale for that chrysanthemum. I'll have to see what it is I'm gonna be able to do with that. Got a big, um, not well composed section here with a big green bit in there that I'm going to probably have to do some negative painting in. But what I need to do now is just let this dry because when you do your first wash and you're laying the groundwork for what it is you want to do next, you have to give it the opportunity to do a little bit of cooking itself and say, this is how I'm going to dry and this is what I'm going to give you to play with. And so if you just carry on manipulating it around, you tend to have too much, um, too much going on to do something with. Look, here she is fiddling again. Just try and fill in a few of the white spaces with a little bit of background colour. Then, as I say, I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to see what I can do just over the top of this now to bring it all together. So I'll get back to you in a little while when that's had a chance to dry. Just before I go, I decided that because this... Um, um, chrysanthemum here was still drying, I could flick a little bit of water into it to get a little bit of marks going that might make it easier to turn that into a flower afterwards. So we'll give that a chance to dry and then we'll see what it is we've got to play with. It's been a couple of hours, I've edited the first half of this um, video and allowed my painting to dry. And now's the time to have a look at it and see what it is that uh, I've got to play with. And this depends on how that this initial wash has dried. So I put the cling film on the carnations, one up here, and I've already taken that off and I have got some marks there. And this uh, little one here now, I'll take this off and I've got some marks here. Don't necessarily look exactly like a carnation, but Hopefully by the time I add some extra paint to there, I'll get them to look a little bit uh, closer to what I want. So I look at what, what I've got here now and I think in my mind, how am I going to pull this together to look um, more like a finished work? As I said at the beginning of this, it may not come together. This is what happens when you paint and you don't have a drawing and you don't, you don't make a drawing, but you're also not um, painting exactly what you see there. You're making some things up. So it's the idea that you, you get to practice your um, brush handling, your color mixing, your thinking about composition, and sometimes they work out, sometimes they don't, but it doesn't matter. It's all very, very good practice. So I'm going to just show you a couple of um, things that I'm going to do here to try and turn these into more of a finished flower. Then I'll um, put the uh, music back on and I'll just carry on painting until I've pushed it as far as I can. Sometimes that uh, comes out to a finished work that I'm happy with. Sometimes I push it over the edge and it it's off into the bin. But um, let's just see what it is that we can do um, now. Um, so I'm looking at what I've got here. As I say, everything is perfectly dry. I've cleaned my palette. I've changed my water, so I've now got a very fresh start. I remember the colours that I've got in the painting because I've got this colour swatch here. If you paint and you don't get an opportunity to finish your work, you need to have somewhere where you've recorded what it is that you used so that you could come back to it at a later time. If you always do your colour swatches, that serves two things. A, your initial practice, but B, you've always got that little list there. Only thing I did when I was doing um, the first washes, I did add a touch of opera, it's either opera pink or opera rose. Um, I'm not sure what brand that opera pink is, but the Daniel Smith and the Windsor and Newton look um, very, very similar. Okay, so I need a few stems, I need a few uh, leaves, I need to do a little bit with the uh, blooms themselves. So I'm just going to start again slowly and find my way. When I paint flowers, I've always got this thing in my mind that my first one always looks overworked. 
So I need to try and find a way of not doing that. Um, try and keep things a little simple. Don't try too hard. Um, look, it's all these things we say, but it's not always that easy. I'm going to start with the Lilianthus at the back here, which um, is pale looking. Um, it's the sort of um, limey green, um, the limey green colour. They're white, but they've just got this hint of a, a sort of green colour. So I'm just looking, I've still got that vase of flowers lower than my painting table in front of me. Um, and I'm just going to see a few shapes. Um, sorry if I have to lean into this a little bit, but uh, it's not always possible to get everything um, in view all of the time. I'll do my best, but sometimes it doesn't work out that way. So I'm just trying to find a little more definition on this one up here. Um, without turn, don't put too much colour down. I'm painting on dry paper now, so there's a fair bit of control here. But you don't want to put so much colour down that you uh, have turned something that you wanted light into. Um, all of a sudden, it's too dark. The background I've got around the outside of this is making the flower look bigger than it needs to be. So I will have to creep in with um, some background colour on here to get rid of a bit of the edge on here if I don't want it to be that fat. I'm talking about this little bit round here. So a tiny bit of paint down. Now, when you do your first washes, and that thing that I did at the beginning, getting colour all over the paper, that's setting the scene. This second bit on dry paper is starting to bring things together, painting individual um, flowers, finding your way. Um, but by no means is this the finished part um, because the, what you need to do when you paint in this particular style is to not get bogged down uh, trying to finish, trying to finish something entirely because if you focus on one flower i'm just painting and trying to put a stem in here to find my way here a little bit if you focus on one flower too much and you work you work you work and it gets tighter and tighter um then you have to move on to the next one and it's got to look just as um, busy so i think it's better to still just put a little bit of paint down Maybe you don't have to go in and do any more. Maybe you do, but not to overwork anything so that you don't end up with a whole painting full of tight little things that have all got to match. So it's better to put a little bit down and say, is it starting to look something like I want it to look? And then move along to another one. When it's dried and you've got more done on the paper, you go back and you say, well, in actual fact, I don't really have to do any more with that to tell the story. It's doing it quite well. Um, so I'm just as well I didn't do too much to start off with. And so that's how I generally tackle um, this type of work. So these are those little button things. And they're all individual little petals, all tightly woven. And... You don't have to put all of the little tightly woven marks in. You've only got to put some in and it will still read what it's supposed to be. So we tell the story with the least amount. Don't make the job bigger than it needs to be. It's not going to make the story any better. Um, so I hope you can see with a few marks there, they're starting to get a little bit more definition. Now, what about one of these carnations? Um, if you've been, if you've got a really, really nice texture that's been made from your um, initial wash, you might not have to do a lot. 
But if you haven't got anything particularly attractive, then you've got to think about doing a bit more. So I'll get myself out those same colours. So I've got three pinks here, a pink, a red and an opera. I'll just get a little bit on my brush, take some moisture off my brush because this is a mop brush and I don't really want it to be full of water and paint all the way down to here um, because that's, um, you know, going to be harder to, to work with. I'm going to have to lean forward a little on this. I'll try and drag this board down a little bit. My carnations are a long way away from me now. Um, and I'll just, uh, just see if I can find some little areas um, to start doing some extra petals that might look like carnations. Little marks, little bits of extra colour. And don't be a slave to, to um, a flower, even when you're painting from a photograph. Um, you do it in a way that you can do it with the least amount of marks. It's better if it's not the story's not completely filled in. It is more interesting. It has a flow about it. It's not um, stagnant, stagnant looking. It's you know, just interesting. So just work around your cling film shapes. If you've had something fantastic uh, for you, um, this is good. But if you haven't, you've got to make some things up. It's just loads of swirly, curved brush strokes like this. And little jaggy ends. So I look at the flower and I try to, I try to um, see how, how it's made and follow that same type of look. You can put, put paint down, rinse off your brush, and then with clean water, just manipulate, manipulate a small amount of paint around, not oodles. You don't want to go from having a light wash into something that's too heavy. I've probably overdone that a wee bit for this first go round. Um, I'm gonna let that dry and see if I can either leave it at that or do I still need to do some more. Now what about, about this um, uh, chrysanthemum which is supposed to have white ticks on it. I haven't done um, a marvellous job with the first um, wash there which means I have to do a better job with the second one. So they've got a, hmm, a bit of a white tip on them. If this doesn't come out exactly like that then I'll have to say to myself well my chrysanthemum is a slightly different um, a variation. I'm going to get a slightly warmer red here and put this in. And I'll just have a look and see what that looks like because I just want to try and make it look a different colour to the carnation. In actual fact, what it could do with is maybe a bit of a darker red. So this is a, uh, I think, Winsor Newton dark red that might be a bit more interesting so I'll just get a little bit of that out I haven't been used in such a long time and I'll just start my way slowly with that and see if maybe that will um, that will work so I've got this looking like a little fluffy ball so I'll just find a few shapes. Just coming around slowly. I don't want to do them all, but obviously it's got to have all these individual, uh, the look of individual um, uh, 
petals. And if you haven't got a lot of uh, light left in yours, you could um, add some opaque white onto this. And I might show you how to do that, depending on how this dries. So here I'm just doing some little uh, sort of triangles, but a little bit curved triangles. Trying to mimic a look. I'm going to rinse my brush off now. And now I'm going to just soften. Soften these marks to see if they start resembling. If I end up with a nice floral, uh, but people can't actually tell what type of floral it is, well, that's how it has to be. I'm not, um, I'm never really worried about what it is when it comes to flowers, unless you're painting, a, you know, a person or an animal and it's got to be exact, but nature is very forgiving and we can get away with a fair bit. So I really just want to do a few brush strokes. Um, I'll just put up the image of that um, um, dahlia and you can see it's really made up of so many little shapes but I've got to find a way of doing them without overdoing them. So I'm dipping in, look, I'm dipping into that red and pink mixture, a bit of that warm one, which I wasn't going to use, and a bit of this dark one here, just to keep it a little varied. And really sort of looking at which way they're growing, which is really the way that they're faced in the vase. But they're like a pom-pom, so these little marks actually go out in every direction. So I'll just put down some colour. Then I'm going to reach for that white to show you how I would do this if I really wanted to be true to this particular um, flower. So just a few marks down. I wish the base of this um, chrysanthemum had been a little bit brighter. I think possibly I could have put a bit of um, um, a different colour choice for the paint. Um, reds can dry incredibly flat and they're often better with a bit of yellow under them. But I was avoiding that because of wanting the white tips. But um, I may have been better putting a yellow base. I hope you can see it's starting to at least have um, some shape of this. So I would leave that to dry and then I would put those little white bits in. So a quick bit down here I could show you. It'll be a repeat of what's going up there. So how about I try one of these? Um, so I'll go back into the purple for this Lilianthus and trying to have a little look while I can see a bit closer to me. Um, and I don't want to turn it into a totally real looking thing, flower, but I've got to give it a little bit more form and so just really going in with the same paint really need that white line in there the same paint so i'm really basically painting the shadow under the shadow under the um, petal so you put the hard line down and then soften it with clean water so and uh, we could have a little bit of pink on this as well just to brighten up a couple of those petals
petals going this way. So that's just dipping into that little bit of pink on my um, just to vary it up a little bit. As I say, this painting may work out, it may not. But I've shared with you how I go about making a floral inspired by life, but with no real um, composition um, and seeing what I can do from my imagination. And that's going to be wet there, so I must be really careful here. Coming in for this one. I think they'll be facing another way. Not every flower needs to be the same level of finish. It's nice to keep some less finished and some more finished. So I hope that's given you an idea how I'm going to do the purple, the light green, the carnations and this chrysanthemum, which I'm going to let that dry and I think I'm going to put a bit more colour on there just to see if I can brighten it up. There is another way of, of making your colours look brighter and that is to darken up what's behind it. Because if you darken up something, everything is going to look brighter um, with dark around it. So I'm going to um, put that on just painting now and just um, push this and see if I can bring it to a painting. And I'll um, speak to you um, closer to the end. And if it does turn out of finished work, then you'll see it at the end of the uh, movie. And if it doesn't, it'll just be, you know, kept as a little study. So let's just see how I go.
and I've taken this um, second stage as far as I can. It isn't the best floral wire I've ever done, but um, hopefully I've been able to show you um, a few ideas of what you can do. And there's a couple of other little things I could do here just to tweak it at the end before I decide it's not, um, uh, it's not worth keeping. You know, do I chuck it away or what do I do? You just still just give everything a little go. So what I'm going to do is this dark section in the middle, which I should have realized when I had this big plain part uh, when I first um, got the colors down, it's looking a little bit boring in here. So I've got very dark paint there. So now I'm going to lift out some paint to just add a little bit of extra light into here. So if I just, this is a flat brush, I've added a little bit of water not a lot and a thin stroke. I hope you can see that. I'm just lifting out some light here and there to put a little bit of light but a little bit of depth in here because these can be more of the stems. I mean, this particular vase that I've used here for my inspiration is just full of greenery. So, and you can't make all of the greenery out. It's just... Um, so we can indicate that we've got more going on because we've got this dark paint here and we can lift a little bit out. So you see I've got some extra stems there. This little stem here's got a little bit messy for my carnation, which I might have wanted to keep a little bit clean so I can just dampen that. I've got a couple of hard lines here. I could do the softening a little bit on those. So if this was meant to be a frameable painting, I, a, I wouldn't have been talking at the same time as trying to paint. And even when I'm not talking to you and I'm filming, I'm forever looking to see that the filming hasn't switched off and I've been busily painting away, only to find that I haven't got anything. I don't really like this dark outline around this carnation. So, an outline that you don't like, you've either got to soften it or add more paint to take an outline look away from it. So there's another stem coming up in there, you can go up behind this leaf here. There's parts of this painting I quite like and as I say, um, sometimes to create your best work you do need a little bit of quiet time, at least I do, quiet time to get what it is that you want. Now let's just see what we can do with that um, chrysanth. I talked about maybe putting some opaque white on there. I'm going to have to try and do something a little bit with this carnation down here or turn it into another pom-pom uh, chrysanth. Um, so with a small brush and clean water, this is opaque white. This is Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White, which is quite opaque when it dries. I'm going to just see if I can get the look of the pom-pom balls. They've just got a point on them. Now, I'm not going to be able to do it all, otherwise it would look quite contrived. But maybe I could just do a few little white tips on these using the red colour that's here as the base and find the little tips of them in a few places. It doesn't have to be all You would be good. So I'll just move around here. I wasn't very happy with my choice of red for this subject. In fact, I think all of my red paints could do with a little bit of a revisit. They don't. They're not pleasing me that much right now, but maybe in my holiday break. I'll have a chance to do a bit more experimenting. So just a few white 
little tips here, hopefully, when this is dry, it will read what it's supposed to be. May not when you're really close up to it, but when you're a bit further away, which is how we view paintings, we don't view paintings sitting right over the top of them. And that's why sometimes we're a bit super critical of our own work because in actual fact, we're, you know, within a few centimeters or less than a foot away from what we're working on and not really seeing what it would look like finished being viewed further away. This uh, bleed proof white, it does dry a little gray, same as white gouache dries a bit gray. So if that happens, you've just got to go back in and put an extra layer over the top. Now you could have achieved this with masking fluid you would have still had a fairly big job afterwards to um, um, fix up the hard line that the masking fluid has left. There we are. Can I get some of this anywhere else? I really feel like I need to do something with this, um, but I don't think I will. Perhaps a little bit of light in a couple of my little green button things, whatever they were. Um, a lot of this doesn't really need too much. And the last thing that I'll do is just quickly a bit of red paint on there. And I think all I'm doing with it, to be honest, is actually going from not a fantastic looking carnation to even a less. Um, so, well, it does put a little bit of paint down and I'll have to leave it alone. Sometimes once you've got the color less than clean looking, it's near nigh impossible to get clean paint again. Um, so fresh from the start is always best. I should have done less to these and let the clean film do it. Maybe even at least put my put my colour choices of red maybe a little bit better. There we are. I'm going to leave that carnation like that. So I've just got this big space down here. Um, my paintings never seem to be finished unless they get a bit of splash in there. So I'm going to just do a tiny little bit of that. Put a signature on it and I'm going to call this one finished. So once again, thanks for watching. Um, I hope to be able to get a bit more filming done in my um, long-term break over the Christmas holidays, but we'll see how we go. Sometimes it's not doing the painting that uh, is the tricky bit, but getting the filming and the editing right, especially if the camera switches off. So I'll do a little bit on this and uh, I'll put that painting up at, at the end. So thanks for watching. Until next time, bye. Thank you.